How can I get my name on one of uh, your ships? We try to respect the heritage of the company and have names that symbolize something. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Leonardo Sonzio and I'm heading fleet management and technology at Maersk. Today we're gonna talk a, a lot around our energy transition, the first experience with Laura Maersk and actually also our coming new builds also running on green methanol. What's green methanol? Green methanol is a, is a green fuel. When you look at the production method, you can talk about green biomethanol or green e-methanol. Biomethanol can be produced from uh, biogas, uh, so utilize biogas as a feedstock, and then you produce uh, um, methanol from it. This is uh, probably the more mature uh, product in the market, and uh, it yields uh, at least 65% greenhouse gas reduction compared to a traditional fuel, considering all of the elements that are needed for producing the fuel and transporting the fuel. Then you have e-methanol. E-methanol is produced uh, utilizing biogenic CO2, which gets combined with green hydrogen, which is produced uh, utilizing renewable energy. The green e-methanol is less mature as a market. That said, it could yield up to 95% greenhouse gas reduction, so a significant reduction in carbon footprint. Pal is asking whether we have plans to introduce hydrogen-powered vessels in the near future. Ultimately, by 2040, we aim at being carbon neutral. And in order to reach this goal, we cannot be stuck in thinking with, uh, along the lines of a single technology. And that's why we're constantly analyzing and scouting what is the next step for us? Hydrogen is one of the uh, fuels that we are looking at. We don't believe we are ready yet to, to take this step, but it's certainly an interesting uh, energy carrier. It comes with some challenges, particularly the temperature. You need to store hydrogen in, in liquid form. But in the next decade, let's see if indeed hydrogen plays a role or a combination with, of hydrogen with some other molecule to produce some interesting fuels. So we will see in the next decade. I would love to travel the oceans uh, on a container ship as a passenger. Would appeal to me much more than uh, on a cruise ship. I cannot agree more with Ulla. I actually love going on board the container ships. It's my favorite part of the job. That's where you see the real work happening. That's where you can connect uh, with the crews and uh, with the people that actually are delivering the products to our customers. The challenge though in, in sailing as a passenger is that we have limited cabin space on board the ship and more often than not all of the cabins are already occupied by our crew members. But Ulla, you know, I can only agree with you, this is the best part of the job. I just use a sailboat, uh, my god. <laughs> That's a very thought-provoking question. Wind and, uh, and using sails uh, is actually something that uh, is gaining uh, traction in the market, mostly to assist propulsion. The amount of wind and the stability of, uh, of wind throughout a route is probably not enough, or so certainly not enough to, uh, to power a vessel. But that said, it's so important to advance the engineering and also think how wind could be uh, harnessed for a container vessel. You can imagine there are some challenges, you know, due to the fact that you have the boxes on the vessel, you would have to consider you know, having some sort of sails or kites or rotor extending far above the height of the container. We are investigating, we are studying, and, and indeed, uh, wind is for free. Wind is 100% uh, renewable, so whatever we can do to harness it, uh, I think it's good for the planet and it's the right way forward. The next question. If shipping moves to, on to ammonia bunkers in 10 years or so, can these ships be easily retrofitted to ammonia propulsion? It is very unlikely that a ship like this, uh, or actually the future uh, methanol-powered vessel, would be retrofitted to operate uh, on ammonia. It would be a very complex and costly uh, engineering and construction exercise. Our belief is that actually multiple solutions will coexist in the market, uh, supporting the green transition. So we can expect, uh, perhaps in the next decade, to have uh, methanol-powered vessels uh, sailing along vessels that, say, are running on ammonia, once the technology is ready. Why not go for zero emissions right now with nuclear? Why waste money on an engine that runs on an unavailable fuel? The reason why we chose methanol for this vessel in our next series of new builds is that the technology is available now. We are able to, over time, source the fuels that we will need that will support us achieving our intermediate targets in 2030 and ultimately in 2040. 
it's true that uh, nuclear technology has been used in, uh, in the Navy sector. That said, it comes with a lot of security concern when considering the application on the merchant navy. And that's the reason why actually we adopted uh, methanol for, for this vessel and the ones to come. Diesel is more efficient and uh, uh, costless depending on location. That is absolutely a true statement. Using diesel doesn't help us in our um, transition to, to uh, climate neutrality. And therefore, we needed to have a shift. Why methanol? Wouldn't a biodiesel of some kind uh, be far more economical for a power plant of this size? As part of what we call our eco-delivery product, we actually use biofuels. And we use them in different forms. We use them in what we call B100, which is a 100% biofuel-based um, uh, type of fuel. Normally, we, we source uh, this uh, fuel from waste cooking oil, so that's the feedstock. Um, or we sometimes we use it in blends. So we call it a, a B30, it's a blend of 30% biofuel, will, seven, will the 70% be in um, conventional fuel. The carbon that is part of the green methanol must come from sustainable sources, and it does not. So just another greenwashing episode. I'm willing to learn, tell me if I'm wrong. First and foremost, uh, um, the green fuels that we utilize are certified. So regardless of the production method and the feedstock, we actually have third parties that are uh, studying and analyzing the way we uh, source these fuels, what is the production, and they ultimately release certificates on the total life cycle emissions, such that we can compare the amount of CO2 or greenhouse gases we release compared to traditional fuels. Is there any difference between a green methanol ship's engine and diesel ship's engine? Yes, there is. A conventional engine runs on diesel uh, or heavy fuel oil, whereas a green methanol ship is equipped with an engine that is capable to burn two fuels. So that's why it's called a dual fuel engine. A dual fuel engine has additional components to enable the combustion of methanol. In fact, there is an additional set of piping that leads the methanol to uh, ultimately the, the cylinder. And there's a separate set of injectors and injection equipment that is needed to indeed lead the methanol into the combustion chamber. The next question, why not name it something cool like a Bad So Hyper Death 9000? Well, that's a mouthful of a name, uh, no doubt. But the reason for, for the name actually goes back in the history of Maersk. In 1886, when Captain Peter Maersk Muller ordered the first steamship, that was a time when the shipping industry was transitioning from wind, from, some, from sails, to actually steam turbines, right at the time of the Second Industrial Revolution. So, you know, choosing this name signifies uh, the other big energy transition that we're going through, which is uh, a, an evolution towards uh, green shipping. So the name is really deeply rooted in the history of the company. Secondly, Laura Maersk, the one that was ordered in 1886, was the first vessel uh, featuring the, the famous seven-pointed star on its uh, funnel. And, um, and I think it's a, it's a nice thing to actually remember that moment uh, and, and still uh, honor this great symbol um, that, that identifies the company. Thank you so much for today. And thanks for all of the very, very good questions.